Folks, hello. This is going to be a different format for this week because I am the person who's going to be asking the questions of Chris Ford. It is still Let's Talk Ed, but we're going to be talking about Chris Ford's history, Chris Ford's work, Chris Ford's baby, Chris Ford's uh, perspective on the world as it pertains to the use of social media in higher education. So with that wonderful presentation that I fumbled my way through, Chris, <laughs> lead us through uh, through basic exploration of the why, the how, the what formats, and how can we utilize uh, uh, social media in higher education? Yeah. So you know, when when you think about it, social media is still very new in in the guise of higher education. You know, Facebook has been around a while. You know, you're, you're circa 15 plus years old on Facebook now. Uh, but still in the grand scheme of things, it's very new. Um, you know, and you have all of these other platforms out there. I mean, truly, when you break it down, you have still hundreds of different social media platforms out there. Uh, but there are, are certain players that are much bigger than others. You know, Facebook, obvious. Uh, Twitter or X uh, is big. Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit. Uh, you know, Reddit is is one of the most visited websites in the world. Uh, and and at the heart, it is a social platform. So there are a lot of different opportunities for colleges and universities to be on social media. Uh, and, and some of it is really thinking about how each channel is different and the expectations of, of different channels. So, you know, we saw during the, the pandemic where TikTok absolutely blew up. Uh, it, it went from being a very minor player to being a huge player. And there were a lot of people that it's like, oh, you have to be on TikTok. You have to be on TikTok. And the reality of TikTok, for example, is, yes, it's incredibly important. There are people that are high school age now that are using TikTok in the same way that people like you and I, Zahi, use Google. Uh, they're using it to find information. But with that said, TikTok, the, the expectation of content on TikTok is so very different than the expectation of content on other social platforms. So if you were putting things on Facebook that is, you know, come to our university, we are a leader and blah, 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 and we're great. If you put that on TikTok, people are going to scroll right past it. They're not going to watch it. Um, you know, the other thing with, with TikTok is you have seconds to grab somebody's attention. Um, when we first rolled on TikTok uh, at my college, our average watch time after we got the platform up and running was about 10 seconds. And, and after that, you saw a drop in watch time when you went in and looked at the, the statistics. So again, it's, it's not going to be, we're going to reformat our, our traditional 30 second commercial and put it on there. Uh, that's not how it's going to work. Um, TikTok, for example, is really, really leaning hard into entertainment. People go to TikTok, they want to be entertained. Chris, uh, so you, you went from zero to to a hundred in very little time for the middle aged uh, curmudgeon that I am. So so let's 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 bring it uh, to to my level of understanding because the the various platforms you talked about vary not just by their name, they vary by uh, you know like the the Twitter or thread uh, are more of a statement uh, in X number of characters. The Facebook is a combo of those, but the Snapchat is a picture, right? The Instagram is also a picture. The TikTok and the shorts uh, are, are video based. So I understand they're all communication tools for the person who doesn't know much about communication, but you know, it appears to me like you would be splitting yourself 
and you would be reformatting your message and, and the concept behind your messaging in different ways to meet that platform. Am I in the ballpark or is you're, that you're even a, not? Okay. You're a hundred percent in the ballpark there. So, uh, you know, it, it's very important as you come up with, with the messaging, uh, to come up with it in a way that meets the format. So you take something like Instagram, for example. Uh, Instagram is very visual. Uh, it, it is very much about the pretty pictures. It's, it's about authentic content. And it's, it's less about sign up for this class or you know, trying to deliver a, a message like that. Does that stuff show up? Yes. Um, you know, Facebook, you are capturing a very wide audience. And, you know, in a lot of cases on Facebook, you are capturing moms and dads. Uh, you're capturing some students. You're, you're capturing fans of your college or university. So, you know, you're, you're capturing this wide audience. So you have to think about, you know, what does the messaging look like on there? And, and you have a little bit more flexibility to do that. TikTok is going to skew very, very young. Uh, and it, people want to be entertained when they go to TikTok. Twitter is really good to deliver newsier updates. So, and it's, it's huge still in the sports arena. So, you know, it's a great way to get out sports scores and, and things like that, that, that are quick, small bites of information. So, you know, you have all of these different things and you have to really think about how are we going to take a message and, and create it for each one of those things. Um, do you have to do it that way? No, not necessarily, but you're going to have overall better performance when you do that. Uh, it, it's also why you really need to invest a lot of time when you're thinking about social media in, in developing your your content calendar and what you're going to be doing, how you're going to do it so that, you know, you're not walking into the office and thinking, all right, what am I going to post today? Uh, it, it shouldn't ever be like that. Uh, it, it's nimble enough that if you do need to get something out in a rush, you can do that, but that shouldn't be how you are approaching social media on a daily basis. So what you're describing is not your, uh, um, the, the, the discussion board or the place you, you announce something. You're talking more about an actual communicative tool, not just an announcement tool. So I'm thinking that you're, uh, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking that you're separating that from your media buys that you do as the marketing uh, person and those, you know, whether it's newspaper, radio, TV, YouTube, uh, but... I, I'm thinking that you're separating it from that. You're also separating it from the news releases that you would uh, put together to announce something. Am I yeah. am I rightish there? Yeah, you're you're again in the ballpark on that. Um, ultimately, what you want to do is bring all of those things together so they are in support of each other. Um, you know, say we have a news release about. A new hire, for example, you know, people are going to maybe want to know who that person is. Um, you know, hey, we've hired a new president at our university. Let's get to know this person. Uh, but how you deliver that may be very different. Um, you know, the press release is going to look very different probably than maybe how you put it on social media. Now, you may have a link back uh, to your official website with your official press statement on there, but uh, you may be using that in a more getting to know you kind of way. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, they all need to be in support of each other. The ads that you're running, you, you want people when they uh, see that ad, they, you want them to get the same sort of feel when they are also visiting your social media. Um, the reality is prospective students are using social media to help 
choose the colleges and universities that they go to. They want to see what students are doing there. Uh, they want to know what is happening. So uh, all of that is is something that, uh, you know, you have to consider and, and work everything in conjunction of each other. And, and Zahi, we're starting to run short on time, but in a couple of our uh, next episodes, we are going to talk about you know, student generated content and authentic content. And, and we're going to talk about the things that, that colleges and universities need to keep in mind if they want to be successful on social media. Yeah. So for you, sir, we are going to call it off for now and reconvene and talk about those uses and how to use them in the classroom. So if you like us, follow us right here on YouTube or on your favorite uh, podcasting uh, platforms. Hopefully next time it'll be Chris doing those things and not me buffooning through it. This is Zahi and Chris talking on Let's Talk Ed.